Hello Sangha, welcome to the Abbot's Address. Today is Thursday, February 15th, 2018. So we're kind of on a track of, of responding to the questions that were posted up on the on the survey, but we're going to take a little pause from that because Ongo is approaching, spring Ongo is approaching, and you know it occurs to us that there's um, there's a lot of folks in the community that maybe don't know what that means or what that is or what the deal is. So for those who don't know what Ongo is, we're going to go over that briefly. And then uh, for everybody, we're going to talk about the subject and the theme of uh, the spring Ongo this year. So writ large, Ongo is a time, uh, a season of training where we take 90 days and we really make some commitment to intensify our practice, to more deeply engage with Zen practice and training and the Dharma and all that kind of stuff. See, So there's... Um, a, it comes from, historically, the Buddha would teach during the rainy seasons in India, and the, his practitioners would all gather, and they would have kind of an intensive Buddhist boot camp kind of thing. And that tradition uh, got translated into China, where they had a more monastic environment. It's a, it's a climate that changes from winter. You know, it's got more seasons, so they had more fixed buildings and monasteries and kind of stuff, and they, they ended up having seasons of training, uh, based on this, and then into Japan, got very specific and very clear, and then into our inheritance here in Toledo, right? So so the way we do this is uh, it's not a mandatorily residential experience. We don't have a way to do that right now, but it is something that for the 90 days in spring and in fall, uh, everybody in the Sangha reviews their level of engagement with their practice, uh, look at things like how much are you sitting are you, in fact, doing the daily liturgy? I hope so. Be good. Um, how often are you making it to the temple and really engaging with the community? Uh, how much are you able to participate in session, maybe? Coming to a Wednesday night if that's new for you, etc. right? And basically, you look, at the, you look at the whole 90 days and make some commitments. Now, this is not something that, you know... Um, Big Brother Abbott is looking over and checking. It's you know it's self guided. It's up to you. We're certainly here. Dawn and I are here to connect with you. If you have questions, we'd love to be involved in the process with you. But it's it's up to you to kind of evaluate your training, evaluate your practice, and dig in. And um, there's a real intelligence to this because nobody who does this well for decades. Um, it's just constantly like full tilt doing practice all the time, like like some kind of a sprinter. You can't sprint forever. You just drop and die, right? So it's more of a marathon thing. It's a long haul thing. And there are inevitably ebbs and flows to one's involvement in into the deeper end of the training, you could say. So there's, it's not even a capitulation to some flaw. It's actually the way we work. We, we're seasonal folks. We're seasonal people. Um, we need time of intensity, and then we need time of relaxation and integration, right? And so um, this is a seasonal intelligence, and it works incredibly well. So the invitation is there. Plug into your practice. Now, beyond just your own practice and coming to the normal temple events, which is great, there's some special ongo qualities, okay? And one of them is that there's always a theme. There's kind of a you know, catch tune that we're going to play together and look at in the Dharma, some point of teaching. And that'll change from Ango to Ango. So there's always a theme. There are workshops that go around the theme. There is a teachings retreat that happens around the theme. All of this is on cue. Um, and then significantly, there's a thing called Sangha Circles. And Sangha Circles are a time where you, you meet once a month for three months. So there's three meetings. And you get together at Sangha members' homes, and you have a kind of a, there's a template to the format, and it's all thematic. It works with the theme of the Ango, and there's a conversation that happens with sharing, and it's a fantastic thing. A lot of, a lot of folks in the community have been greatly nourished by the Sangha Circles program, and there are some folks that host and some folks that join. And, they, you know, usually I think, uh, I, I could be wrong on this, but I think it's between five and eight people per group or something like that. Um, so it's great just to get wisdom from the Sangha and to get engaged in the topic. 
but also it's just really great to look at other people's houses and see what kind of stuff they have. That's kind of fun. And then, and then you also get to know other people in the community, which is fantastic. You get to really connect outside of the normal sort of temple environment or what have you and just get to know people. It's, one, it's a great opportunity. So all these things are on cue and going to be happening for Ango. Now, specifically, this Ango is going to be about death and dying and being with dying and grieving in our relationship to death, our relationship to impermanence. The main text that we're going to use for this is very simple and familiar to us all. It's the five remembrances, uh, those little lines in there. Uh, I am of the nature to die. There's no way to escape death. Uh, we'll call that the Ango text, right? And those that surround it in the five remembrances. So not a big heavy lift in terms of reading. Uh, but a very big and important topic. Okay, we could throw in there the um, the evening gata. Let me respectfully remind you, life and death are of supreme importance. Each of us should strive to awaken. Awaken. Do not squander your life. That captures the flavor of this ango. It's going to be great. Okay, um, there's a lot of really deep teachings and ways to really engage and look at this. Now, to assist us with this, um, my schedule book. Okay. So, ch so check some dates out here. Okay. So we've got, um, the Ango opening session, uh, is starting on Thursday, March 1st, and that's going to go through to March. What is it? 4th. Okay. And that's the Ango opening session and the Ango opening ceremony is going to be March 4th. And that's really fantastic. If you can at all make it, please make the effort to be at the Ango opening ceremony, if nothing else, because this is where we have the signing of the Ango scroll, which is a great thing to do. And it really sets the tone and sets the agenda for the practice and the quality of the Ango. So it's, in my view, it's critical to, to be there if you at all can. And if not, tune in remotely. If not, watch the remote thing asynchronously and participate that way. It did actually, these things do matter, um, I would say. Then uh, March 6th through the 11th is the teachings retreat, okay? And this is the, this is the spring teachings retreat, the spring Ongo teachings retreat. This coincides with spring break at the University of Toledo, so I can do this. Um, and Dawn and I are going to be working through this topic through all kinds of really fascinating and helpful angles. Um, a teachings retreat, it's, it's, uh, it's a day commuter retreat. It's held at the temple. Uh, it's definitely very conversational and it's very guided and there's a lot of triad conversations. Um, and it's going to be about this topic and it's going to be really deep. Okay, so please come and participate. That's a drop-in thing. You can do any chunk of it or all of it, uh, and please do. Okay, so there's the teachings retreat. Um, then uh, March 31st in the afternoon from 1 to 5 is one of these Ango retreat days, and there's a session April 5th through 8th. I'm reading this carefully. And then there's another Ango afternoon workshop on Saturday, April 28th. Uh, from 1 to 5, and that's followed by the Sangha Arts Night from 6 to 8. Now, the content of those two um, is clear. It's not sure which is going to be which yet, but it's going to have to do with our own personal preparations for death and dying. Um, there are certain basic brute facts that need to be considered. There are uh, legal things that we are advised to put in place. Uh, there's end-of-life stuff to be thinking about, and you might say, well, I'm so young, this isn't relevant to me watch the news okay it's it's relevant death comes to everybody and there is no guarantee of even another day so we would do well to consider thoroughly just the mundane facts of how do we look at this how do we deal with this have we and the temple is going to be a resource for this for community members and there's a lot about this that we'll go into together and then another one of those days um the saturday afternoons march 31 or april 28 is going to be um, the Sangha uh, preparation for folks passing away. We had this encounter last year. Brother Jinzan passed away, right? And now our community responded beautifully and impeccably and inspiringly to this situation, right? 
Um, and so we have enough folks in the community now that this is, this is going to be the case. This is going to happen. Um, and so there are some very specific traditions in the Zen uh, way about how the community responds. How do we deal with this as a group? And so we'll be going over that. It's going to be wonderful. Um, and then the Ango closing session is May 28th through June 1st. And June 1st is actually the Ango closing ceremony. So those are the bookends. Now embedded in that uh, also is Saturday, May 5th. We've got a special Roxu sewing day. We're going to try to get this... Uh, special Roxu that's related to the topic we're talking about. Uh, we're going to make this thing in one day. Kaishin, Postulant Kaishin has got a great idea. We'll see how great it is. It's going to be great. Come and check it out. If you're doing Jakai, this would be a really good thing for you to look at. Um, if you've done Jakai, please come and participate and recapitulate. I guess to let the cat a little bit out of the bag, um, the, the Sangha will have a, a box that's ready. And if any of us passes away, one of the things in there is going to be a pure white Roxu. Um, and that will be for the deceased. And so this is something that the entire community will help make. And it could be for you. It could be for me. It could be for any of us. It could not be pulled out for a decade or longer. Who kn We don't know. But what we do know is that the next time one of our community members passes away, we will have a lot more resources ready to hand to help facilitate this and meet that family even better than we did in the past. So that's what that sewing day is about. Uh, what was it? May 5th. And then last thing I'll say, uh, well, two last things, I guess. One, Jakai is going to start. So if you've been flirting with the precepts and you've been thinking that this might be your year, your year to check it out, Let's go ahead and do that because the train is leaving the station. The Jukai, the Jukai chain, the Jukai, Jukai train <laughs> is, is lifting off on May 19th. That's the first day of retreat. That's a Saturday. So we need to get that figured out and get engaged. If you've been thinking about it, connect with me, connect with Reverend Dawn. Let's have the conversation and decide whether or not further discernment makes sense for you. And then last thing, uh, with great joy and pride and a little, little happy tear in my eye can say that, you know, the postulants have concluded or will have concluded a year's public discernment about ordination in the Zen Buddhist tradition. We have the Great Heartland Seminary, which has been up and running. Um, and these five folks have been doing a lot of deep work, and they've been uh, discerning, is this actually the case for them? And uh, so, yeah, the answer is yes. Um, and so somewhere within this ongo, we're going to do a transition from postulancy to novitiate, uh, that these folks shall actually become novice priests in training, uh, which is different from postulants who are like trying to discern whether or not a vocation is what they want to, is the right fit or not, which is noble and a good thing to do, right? We've done it for a year. It's clear. Let's take the next step and actually have them become novices. So that's going to happen in there somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where we're going to put it in yet. We might su surprise them with it. We'll see. Okay. Uh, last bit. Yes, there is a book. <laughs> I did this last because I don't want people to stress. I've been holding up a lot of books lately, but this is really awesome. It's new. Okay. Frank Ostineski, uh has written a book called The Five Invitations. Uh, discovering what death can teach us about living fully. And this is going to be the source uh, beyond the five remembrances and evening gotha and that kind of stuff. This is going to be the sort of contemporary book. This thing is very accessible. He's very insightful. He started the Zen hospice program back in the day. He's got a ton on the ball. Um, I came to him through some podcasts and stuff, and I was very inspired by his. There he is. Nice guys. Okay, so yeah, I was very inspired by his teaching. And this is going to be, you know, if you want to get a book, this is a good one to get. Uh, and it'll sort of give you the flavor and theme of kind of the direction the ongo is going to be in. Okay, everybody, thank you for your practice. It's going to be a great ongo. Please take this seriously. Consider what you've been doing. Consider what you could be doing. Decide accordingly, and let's jump in together. Thank you for your practice, everybody.